Welcome to the Dr. Mudgill Podcast. This is episode 67. We are officially in March. Uh, we had our first bit of snow. Uh, well, I guess I think it was our first bit of snow uh, for the winter a couple of days ago. So that was exciting. Um, been a good week plowing through and uh, I'm excited to be doing this podcast with you guys. So this podcast is going to be kind of like a hashtag Ask Dr. Mudgill series podcast. Uh, we got a great question in from Reddit, which I'm going to share with you guys, and uh, we'll take it from there. So the question is, or it says, crazy acne at 23. I've always had clear skin, but recently, past five months, I've had uncomfortable acne. Sorry, uncontrollable acne. It's huge pimples that never quite seem to come to a head and are very painful. I haven't really changed much about my routine. I did go off my birth control but have been back on it for a month and a half at least. I've also started tretinoin in this time, around two months, and have noticed much improvement in the skin texture, but none in the acne. I'm freaking out because it's so weird that this has come from nowhere and it's never been a problem before. Do I just wait it out or is there something I'm missing? Well, I love that question and you are literally describing to me my most common acne patient. So a lot of my patients are adult women that um, are continuing to have cystic acne, which is what you're describing. The pimples that are deep down, never really come to a head. You know, they could last for sometimes like, you know, weeks. When they go away, they leave a blemish behind. And typically those are, or invariably I should say, those are hormonal cystic pimples. So um, there's basically a few sets of patients that I see. I mean, I would say I'm, I'm speaking predominantly about my female acne patients. Uh, so there's patients who break out during their teenage years and then they continue to break out through college and beyond. So they basically have always had some acne, um, whether it be superficial acne or cystic acne, and it's just persisted since their teenage years. Um, then there's there are patients who start to get acne later on in life. So around the time of menopause or sometimes it's post-pregnancy. Um, and then there's folks like you who come off the birth control pill and start to break out a couple of months later. Um, so like I said, what you're describing is hormonal cystic acne, and you are literally my most common acne patient. So what's happening is when you came off the pill, your hormones, the pill basically regulates your hormones. It keeps your hormones at a steady state. Um, but when you come off of it, your hormones could start to act erratically. And you know they could be higher, they could be lower, they could you know, fluctuate quite a bit. And when that happens, oil glands can't stand it. And it's not that your oil glands are abnormal or your hormones are abnormal. It's just that they're fighting and behaving in an abnormal way. And when that happens, folks who are predisposed to getting acne can get hormonal cystic acne, which frequently can affect anywhere on the face, but frequently affects along the jawline, the chin, sometimes the neck, sometimes the back, sometimes the chest, or it can affect your whole face. Um, so in your case, you came off the pill. Typically what happens is a couple of months after coming off of the pill, you can start to break out um, and it can persist actually. So once you start breaking out, it's kind of like a snowball going down a hill and it just you know, continues on and on until you do something about it. So you mentioned that you're using tretinoin. So tretinoin is retin-A. That's the generic name for retin-A and that's a topical retinoid. And that works very well for superficial acne. So tiny little pimples, blackheads, whiteheads, that sort of stuff. And that's probably what you're describing that you're noticing an improvement in the overall texture of your skin. But unfortunately, topicals, Retin-A, and there's a whole bunch of other topicals out there on the market, they don't really get deep enough to fight where the action is. So the action in your case or in other women who have hormonal cystic acne is deeper down in the skin. It's the oil glands that are around hair follicles, and that's why these pimples can sometimes be painful. They never come to a head. They last for a really long time. Um, so that's basically describes what's going on with you. Now, in your particular situation, uh, sounds like you got back on the pill about a month or a month and a half ago. It can sometimes take a few months for you to see the benefit of going back on the pill. So, you know, it is possible. One of the things you mentioned is, you know, should I or asked was, should I wait this out? And, you know, you could give it another six weeks or so and see if things peter out. It's quite possible that, you know, when you were on the pill, your skin was perfectly clear. You came off of it, you started to break out, you went back on the pill, and um, it's possible that your skin will stop breaking out after a few months. Um, but it's also possible that the cat's out of the bag and, you know, now your propensity to make hormonal cystic pimples will continue. So that's kind of describing what's going on in you and, like, literally – 
millions and millions and millions of other women. Um, the good news is, uh, is that there are, there's a great option for you. Um, so a lot of women come off of the pill because they just don't want to be on it anymore. Um, they don't like the way they feel on it. Uh, they want to just take a break from it. They've been on it for many, many years and just, just don't really want to be on it anymore. Um, so I totally get it. You know, in your case, it sounds like, you know, you probably, you don't really have a diversion to be on the pill. You went back on it. And like I said, you can wait, you know, another month, month and a half or so, four to six, even eight weeks to see if your skin improves. But for women that don't want to go back on the pill or women that go back on the pill are still breaking out. There's a medication that I literally have thousands and thousands of current active patients on. And that's a medication called spironolactone. So spironolactone works amazingly well for hormonal cystic acne in women. It's almost my knee jerk go to for any woman who has hormonal cystic acne. And the reason why I like it is because it's super, super safe and it is super effective. And uh, I'm just going to describe to you like what it is and how it works and how it could potentially benefit you or other folks who are struggling with hormonal cystic acne. So like I said, what happens sometimes in women who have persistent hormonal cystic acne are their hormones are kind of fighting with their oil glands. And what spironolactone does, uh, it blocks the receptor on your oil gland that's interacting with your circulating hormones. And by doing that, it basically stops them from fighting and then my patient's skin clears up. Um, so, you know, for you, it could be an option, like I said, you know, after you've, if you still break it out like four to six weeks from now, but for, you know, thousands of my personal patients and millions of other women, um, it is an amazing option for hormonal cystic acne. Now I mentioned it's a diuretic, so it's a real intended use is for treating, uh, swelling in the legs, high blood pressure, that sort of stuff, stuff that diuretics are typically used to treat, but a completely off label use. And it's a well-established off label use, you know, it's widely reported in the literature, Folks have been using this for decades safely for various hormonal issues. Uh, you know, sometimes we use it for hair loss in women. Um, it's used frequently for uh, you know, other, other hormonal things, but the predominant use for it in dermatology is to treat hormonal cystic acne. Now, of course you're thinking, or you may be thinking, uh, you know, like, okay, great, you're gonna clear up my skin, but what are the other side effects of this medicine? So what I tell my patients when I put them on spironolactone is there's three things I wanna tell you about spironolactone. So, uh, one of the potential side effects is, and this is for women who are not on the birth control pill. So for women who are not on a birth control pill and are on spironolactone, there's like a one to 5% chance that their periods might get a little bit wacky. And what I mean is they might come sooner, they might come later, they might be shorter, they might be longer. Sometimes the period can go away for a couple of months. Um, none of this stuff is dangerous to you, but it is possible 95% of the time that doesn't happen, but it's possible that that could happen. The second thing that some folks may notice is some fullness of their breast tissue, kind of like when, when you get your period. Um, no one's ever stopped, none of my patients have ever stopped the medication for that reason. It's not painful or debilitating in any way. Again, it happens in a very, very, very small minority of patients, maybe one to 5% of patients. Um, the third thing is not really like a real thing for humans, but you know, many, many moons ago, there were some animal studies that were done with spironolactone and, you know, on rats. And rats were basically overdosed on spironolactone. And some of the female rats got breast cancer. Um, so that is a scary thing that my patient, I always warn my patients, like, you know, when you walk out of my office, you're going to Google this and you will see that in rats, spironolactone has been shown to cause breast cancer. The truth is, in humans, there's never been a single case of breast cancer uh, from spironolactone. It's been around for many, many years, you know, 70, 80 years, something along those lines. And, you know, millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of folks have taken it without any issue. In fact, there's some studies that show that it has a protective effect against breast cancer in humans. So what I tell my patients is, you may see that, but if you were someone in my family, like if, as a, for instance, I've treated all three of my nieces with this medicine. My daughter, who's a teenager, if she gets hormonal cystic acne, this is likely what I will put her on. Many of her best friends who are my patients are on it. Um, you know, this is, like I said, this is my knee-jerk go-to for my patients, but it's also my knee-jerk go-to for women in my family who are struggling with hormonal cystic acne. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know if this is a true statement, but I do think I'm probably the world's biggest prescriber of spironolactone. Um, I really think it's an amazing medication that works amazingly well. Now, the first two side effects that I mentioned, irregularity of your periods and fullness of your breast tissue, for women that are on the birth control pill and spironolactone, those things don't happen because the birth control pill is basically regulating your hormones in addition to the spironolactone blocking the effect of your hormones on your oil glands. So 
for women that are on the pill, there's really, you know, there are really no side effects. That being said, one other thing that I do like to mention to my patients is spironolactone is a diuretic. So it does, you know, make you pee more and it can, um, it can make you dehydrated. So what I recommend for my patients is just make sure you're on top of your water consumption. You know, most of the side effects related to spironolactone, um, other than the ones I just described, um, are generally related to being dehydrated. So I advise my patients to just, you know, front load your day with drinking like a pint of water and then just drinking tons of water throughout the day to mitigate the potential uh, for any side effects. So that's a very long-winded answer to your question. Um, obviously, if you are in the New York City area, you can come see me. You know, I have many, many patients just like you. But if you're not, you know, you can most certainly find a board-certified dermatologist in your area. I'm certain that can help you with your acne. Um, you are not alone. You're not struggling alone with this. You're not the only person that has this. This is you're literally one of millions of women that are struggling with the same issue. And uh, like I said, the good news is. It's very, very treatable. So I hope that answers your question. Um, if any of you guys have any questions about spironolactone or just acne stuff in general, you can drop them in the comments or, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to either make another podcast or answer your question directly. So with that, I wish you all a wonderful, restful weekend, and I will see you guys next week. Let's get it.